If you like what you see here on the outside, you're going to love what you'll see on the inside. Ah, uh, yes. There are many things in common with a Hooters restaurant and an airline. Both have attractive crew, both have wings, and both have twin large uh, engines that drive the business forward. But surely that isn't enough for Hooters, a male niche restaurant, to start an airline. Wait, what? Where did they even get the idea to get into the flying game? And what happened? This is the Hooters Air Story. But first we need to set the table. Hooters Air story actually begins with another airline called Pace Airlines. Pace Airlines was founded back in 1996 and was designed as a luxury charter airline for sports teams, celebrities and corporations with a single Boeing 737-200, carrying 44 passengers in an all first class layout. The venture was really successful and almost right away the airline grew from just a single jet to four aircraft. And by the end of the year, the airline had several scheduled charters with vacation destinations with a fleet of six Boeing 737-300s. Everything was golden for the airline and by mid-2001, it had become a large charter carrier of 21 aircraft of 737s and 757s. Around this same period, Hooters owner Robert Howell Brooks was shopping around for an airline. We can't say for what reason he wanted to get into the airline game, but it was rumoured that he got the idea from some college students that proposed it as the next step of his restaurant empire. The airline would not only be a profitable sector of his Hooters business, but it would also act as a flying billboard for the Hooters brand, which was rapidly growing at the time. His motto, good food, cold beer, and pretty girls, never goes out of style. Do you know why our beer is so cold here at Hooters? Because we keep it in the refrigerator. Flush with cash, he first approached bankrupt Vanguard Airlines of Kansas City, which had suffered from the aviation downturn following 9-11. But his offer was rejected because the bid was too low for all of the assets. And we'll cover Vanguard in another video soon. As for the other guys, buckle up. The Hooters CEO then turned to Pace Airlines and offered to buy the airline outright in 2003. With the deal done, he created the Hooters Air brand and set to work bringing the restaurant to the sky. Did you ever think by being a Hooters girl at the restaurant that you would have this opportunity to be a flight attendant for Hooters Air? No, but when the option was brought up to me, I was like, I'm going to go for it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I'm so excited. Hooters Air offices would be headquartered in Myrtle Beach, while the operations, maintenance and flight personnel, which would be directly controlled by Pace Airlines, remained largely based in Winston-Salem in North Carolina. Hooters Air would convert four Pace Airlines Boeing 737s with 114 seats on board to the new livery, including adding the mascot, Hootie the Owl, onto the vertical stabilizer. So what was it like to fly? On board, passengers would be treated to two Hooters girls from local restaurants that would spend time in the cabin chatting to passengers, playing trivia games, and selling Hooters merchandise. Well, now you'll be able to get a chance to not only fly down there and enjoy a vacation, but get paid for it as well. Excited about that? Looking forward to that. (laughs) They did not, however, perform any flight attendant duties. This is because on board there was also three to four actually trained cabin crew from Pace Airlines, who wore much more modest uniforms as opposed to the tight outfits of the Hooters girls, and served passengers food and drink, and performed all the safety aspects of traveling by air. By comparison, the Hooters girls were completely untrained entertainers. What did they say in terms of flying on the airplane? Any training, anything like that? Um, There's certain things that we can't touch, I guess you can say, on the flight, but otherwise we're there to have fun, entertain, and just be friendly. And since we're not certified as flight attendants, we can't help them. The airline would target golfers from around the region to fly them to the many courses of Myrtle Beach. 
Hooters would even run their own competitions in this sport. As part of its advertising campaign, the company advertised non-stop floats for most of its routes, including funny slogans like Fly a Mile With Us and stuck to a flat price point of $129 per seat, which is rather incredible for an airline that wasn't specifically a low-cost carrier. They marketed themselves as a low-fare carrier. Puts the fun back into flying. And it was comfortable too. The plane had 34 inches of seating pitch throughout the aircraft, which was comparable to the business classes of other rival carriers across the country. And keeping with the golf-friendly orientation of the carrier and the quirky advertising, this cabin was called Club Class Seating. Also, at the time when many low-cost carriers were eliminating in-flight frills in an, in an effort to reduce expenses, Hooters Air served complimentary meals to all customers on trips lasting over one hour. Although apparently customers were a little bit disappointed that the famous Hooters Wings and Hooters Inn restaurant experience was not exactly replicated in the air. Passengers were served pretzels and cold canned beverages. The airline also had a reputation for safety and was never involved in any major incident. It's even rumoured that the air marshals rarely stationed officers on board the aircraft and that flight attendants who worked for Hooters Air said that the carrier's passengers were surprisingly respectful. What would you tell people out there watching the show about flying Hooters Air? You should definitely do it. It's an experience like no other. For Hooters Air, this model seemed to work rather well, and the airline fleet expanded from the original four Hooters livery pace aircraft to seven planes, including a single Boeing 757-200. The route network would expand well beyond Myrtle Beach and feature flights across the country reaching as far away as Las Vegas, Denver, and the Bahamas. Pace Airlines itself continued to operate alongside the Hooters venture and got a big boost in 2004 when the carrier applied for 180 F-tops to fly from Oakland, California to Honolulu, Hawaii, which may have eventually led to a future Hooters destination. In addition, the Hooters airline also planned a direct Myrtle Beach to Las Vegas link to connect to the new Hooters restaurant and casino in the city. The airline got as far as performing two proving flights to Hawaii, but would never actually go ahead with the two new routes. This would be the first of many red flags and mark the full extent of the carrier's expansion. Fly Hooters Air! In 2005, Hooters Air was operating cross-country routes from Rockford, Illinois to Denver and Las Vegas. These flights were actually subsidized with a guarantee that they would be profitable. Unfortunately, and unannounced to Hooters Air, the same promise was given to a small carrier called United. This competition, plus a rapid increase in fuel prices, thanks to the impact of Hurricane Katrina, saw Hooters Air pull out of Rockford before the end of 2005. Management tried to compensate by raising their ticket prices, but then sales plunged and the airline started flying empty flights. It then switched to a short haul high density model, but this also failed to make an impact. In January 2006, the airline suddenly ceased all scheduled operations, citing rising costs and refunded all tickets. Pace Airlines would continue to operate charter operations for three more years before shutting down during the GFC when corporate clients ran out of budget. As for the Hooters livery planes, they would never hoot again. Ultimately, there are several reasons why Hooters Air ended its shift in the airline game. The first and most quoted reason was the rise of fuel prices during this period. This was a fixed cost that blew out the profit for the carrier, and it could no longer compete with rising competition. Airlines like Southwest and JetBlue began rapid expansion during this period, and with vastly superior route networks and frequent flyer programs, they were able to gobble up the Hooters market. And remember those college students that allegedly came to him with the idea of the airline back in 1999? Well, they would sue Hooters, claiming that the CEO used their concept, plan, and worked product to start the airline in 2003, but never offered them management jobs or a stake in the new company. The students were not successful with their court case. After all, it was simply a university project that they did for free with no written contract, but it was a bad PR smear at a time when the airline was most vulnerable. In total, it is estimated that Hooters lost roughly $40 million in the long run operating Hooters Air. 
And this isn't counting the legal fees that the CEO himself faced as a result of launching the airline and then when he was sued by the college students. And according to a source for this video, it didn't really budge the bottom line of the restaurants either. But we do also need to talk about the positives. As mentioned by other videos on this topic, the carrier did fill an important market segment in America and brought plenty of business to Myrtle Beach in a time that passengers were afraid to fly. The airline also served many airports that were rather remote, like Rockford, Illinois, or Gary Airport in Chicago. Today, other airlines carry on the carrier's broad traditions, such as the infamously dubbed Bikini Airline of Vietjet. Although before you get excited, we should point out that this was a publicity stunt and the airline was ultimately fined for it. While it may appeal to a certain male desire, ultimately these Bikini Airlines are judged on their on-time service record, aircraft, and seat price which at the end of the day, no matter how much you dress up an aircraft with glee or the crew inside it, it all still comes down to price. And this was something that the Hooters Air experiment failed to overcome. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. A small part of the research of this video comes from a new aviation channel called Expo Aviation, which is running a series of the same name. If you want a deep dive into this airline and many others like it, I suggest you check them out and give them some love from Found and Explained. And if you have an idea for a grounded episode, let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, then consider giving it a like and subscribing. For those who want to support the channel more, we also have a fantastic Patreon that you can join and get exclusive live streams and more content early when available. And those that have made it this far into the video and haven't clicked away, I'm also going to be running a competition to create a custom livery and put it onto an aircraft of your choice for a future video. So stay tuned for that. Again, thank you so much for watching.